After long ado, it's finally here everybody, our first Natron tutorial. And today's tutorial is stabilizing your shaky footage. Hey guys, it's me, your host, Micah Pendleton, and welcome to Premiere Prep. Yes, it is our first Natron tutorial. I'm so excited. I haven't really been using Natron up until recently because it hasn't quite gotten to that point where I was like, okay, I can use this. But now it is at that point within the past couple of months, and I've definitely been playing with it. I've actually been using it for a couple of upcoming short films and stuff, like the one we're going to have an action series for this January, which we're look I'm looking forward to a lot, and I think you guys are as well. It's going to be really, really awesome. But anyway, I had to stabilize a couple of shots that I shot on my 135mm lens, and there was just a little bit of shake in there. And so I stabilized it in Natron. It did a fantastic job with just one node. It was awesome. So I cannot wait to show you guys how to do this. It's super easy. Cannot wait to do our first Natron tutorial, finally. So let's jump in to Natron. Here is an example of our shot before, as you can see. It's quite shaky. When we're done with our shot, we'll have this. Much better. Also note that shooting at a higher shutter speed can help when doing this though it's not a must. If you're interested in stabilizing your footage using Blender, you can check out this episode where we did exactly that. Now let's get started. Obviously, the first step is going to be to open up Natron. We're not going to go over all the different parts of the UI or anything like that right now. That will probably be a complete future series. Now to import your footage, simply drag and drop into the node graph. And as you can see on our timeline, the project length has automatically been adjusted to the length of our clip. Make sure also that your clip's node is connected to the already present viewer node. Now let's add a tracking node. Over on the tools bar, under the transform icon, select tracker. If you already had your clip selected, it should add the tracker right between your clip's node and the viewer node. Now you're ready to track. Find in your clip a static object that is nice and contrasting to things around it. I'm going to use the edge of this bench. Now to add a track, simply go to the tracker's options over in the properties panel. Under this tracker list, you'll see this plus icon. Click it to add a new track. Now on your canvas, you'll see a tracker. Grab it in the center to position it in the correct place. Now you can grab the inner box's corners to change the size and shape of the tracker, and the outer box to change the tracker's zone, if you will. It tells the tracker within where to look for each frame. Now up at all these arrows, we can click track forward. This track isn't too bad, it went quite fast. You may need to correct the track though if it falls off point. Now it's time to stabilize. Under the tracker's properties, go to the transform tab under motion type, select remove jitter, and change transform type to transform. Now as your clip plays, you'll see that the shot bounces in and out of the frame a little bit. To correct this, simply go down to transform controls and under scale, scale up the clip just enough to have it fill the frame through the whole duration. For my shot, anywhere between 1.04 to 1.1 would probably work. And boom, we have a stabilized shot. Now all that's left to do is export. To do so, go back to the Tools panel and under Image, get a Write node. Under File Type, I'm going to go with PNG for an image sequence. Then go to the folder you want to save it in. Now create a folder for your sequence and type a file name. Make sure you put a hashtag at the end to indicate where you want Natron to insert frame numbers. All of these settings are something we'll have to go over in a future episode, but after they've been adjusted, just hit render. And now we have a completed shot. Here's before, now after. It's a pretty subtle effect, but it's definitely worth it. So there you have it stabilizing shaky footage in Natron. We finally did a Natron tutorial and Natron is absolutely amazing. But now I'm conflicted because I don't know if I should stay with Blender or if I should go over to Natron. They're both so amazing. Maybe I'll just keep using both for a little while and then eventually I might switch to Natron, but I can't help myself because Blender is so amazing. Ah, oh, this is going to be a hard one. 
But anyway, guys, that wraps up this episode of Premiere Prep. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to be definitely having more Natron tutorials in the future. I've actually been doing a lot of way more advanced stuff in Natron. I even did something for my local TV station. It was an opener for a football game and everything where I had to do a lot of fun compositing and everything. That was a lot of fun, and so we'll be definitely having more Natron tutorials in the near future, especially just considering how good Natron has gotten and how good it continues to get. So I cannot wait for these tutorial guys. It's going to be a whole lot of fun, and I cannot wait to bring you along for the ride. So that wraps up this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Coming up soon, we do have the Filmmaker's Christmas List, which I just filmed with a good friend of mine, Java Moody, and I cannot wait to get that out to you guys either. It's just going to be a whole lot of fun. And of course, the action series come up in January. There's a lot of great stuff coming up on the Film World YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Again, stay tuned for more. I'm your host, Micah Pendleton. Remember to live your life one frame at a time, and I will catch you next time. <laughs>